Good morning. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel and welcome to our bright and early Rise and Grind to Shine Monday morning inspiration as we continue our brand new series that we started last week on destroying limitations. Um, but before we get started, two points. Um, number one, it's not so bright and early. You know, I usually post uh, <laughs> around 6 a.m. I have, some of you know that I'm moving into the office, into a new place. I have not had internet for a few days now and they just left about an hour ago. So sorry for the late video. And you know, I usually post the devotionals on the website. Like I said, I have not had internet. So I will post it by the end of tonight. For those of you that like to follow along, you can go to my website. The link is in the description www.dreveniraymond.com go to wellness corner on the left hand side and there you can download for free the pdfs last week is still there and then i'll like i said i'll upload today's um a little later this evening and then you'll have access to it um but with that being said let's get started so last week we talked about the chains that bind and we discussed how Paul tells us in Hebrews to lay aside all of those things um, that weigh us down so that we can run the race that God has set before us. And one of the most common limitations and chains that bind people and prevent them from living their best life is that of fear. So today's topic for discussion is overcoming fear part one. Um, it's part of a uh, two um, series discussion. Um, and we have two passages of scripture in our text for today. The first is 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. And the second is 1 John 4 verse 18. And forgive me, I'm old school. I didn't even have printers. So I'm on <laughs> these little pieces of paper. Um, so anyway, we live in a fallen and perfect world that runs rampant with fear. 24-7, we are inundated with news stories covering murders, terrorism, political unrest, and collapse of government. Is it any wonder why so many of us suffer from depression and anxiety? But fear has no place in the life of a believer. And how do I know this? Because all throughout scripture, God constantly admonishes us, urges us, commands us to not fear. So what is fear? The dictionary defines fear as an unpleasant um, emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. The Bible also tells us that fear is a spirit. And this is evidence in our first passage of scripture in our text, um, 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, and it states, for God has not given us the spirit of fear or timidity, but one of love, power, and self-discipline. Therefore, we know that our lives should not be dominated by fear. Instead of walking in a spirit of fear, we should walk in the spirit of God. And that spirit is one uh, of love, of power, and of a sound mind. And a sound mind is one that is free of unrest, worry, doubt, anxiety. One that does not look at circumstances, um, does not look at the experiences that they've been through, one that is truly and completely focused on what the Word of God says concerning them and nothing else. And the Bible warns us against fear so much because fear left unchecked can be completely detrimental to our lives. When we allow it to dominate us, fear um, will influence every aspect of our being, including our thoughts, our patterns, our behaviors, even our decisions. And once 
we um, begin to make our decisions based on fear instead of the word of God, then we allow fear to inactivate faith. And we've learned from our faith series that when we don't have faith, we will never get to the place that God has designed specifically for us. And we will never experience the miraculous in our lives. So, Fear can come in all shapes, sizes, and forms. Some people have a fear of failure. Others have a fear of the unknown or a fear of the future. Good morning. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel and welcome to our bright and early Rise and Grind to Shine Monday morning inspiration as we continue our brand new series that we started last week on destroying limitations. Um, but before we get started, two points. Um, number one, it's not so bright and early. You know, I usually post uh, around 6 a.m. I have, some of you know that I'm moving into the office, into a new place. I have not had internet for a few days now and they just left about an hour ago. So sorry for the late video. And you know, I usually post the devotionals on the website. Like I said, I have not had internet. So I will post it by the end of tonight. For those of you that like to follow along, you can go to my website. The link is in the description www.dreveniraymond.com. Go to Wellness Corner on the left-hand side, and there you can download for free the PDFs. Last week is still there, and then I'll, like I said, I'll upload today's um, a little later this evening, and then you'll have access to it. Um, but with that being said, let's get started. So last week we talked about the chains that bind. And we discussed how Paul tells us in Hebrews to lay aside all of those things um, that weigh us down so that we can run the race that God has set before us. And one of the most common limitations and chains that bind people and prevent them from living their best life is that of fear. So today's topic for discussion is overcoming fear part one. Um, it's part of a uh, two um, series discussion um, and we have two passages of scripture in our text for today. The first is 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 and the second is 1 John 4 verse 18. And forgive me, I'm old school. I didn't even have printers so I'm on <laughs> these little pieces of paper. Um, so anyway, we live in a fallen and perfect world that runs rampant with fear. 24 seven, we are inundated with news stories covering murders, terrorism, political unrest, and collapse of government. Is it any wonder why so many of us suffer from depression and anxiety? But fear has no place in the life of a believer. And how do I know this? Because all throughout scripture, God constantly admonishes us, urges us, commands us to not fear. So what is fear? The dictionary defines fear as an unpleasant um, emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. The Bible also tells us that fear is a spirit. And this is evidence in our first passage of scripture in our text, um, 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, and it states, for God has not given us the spirit of fear or timidity, but one of love, power, and self-discipline. Therefore, we know that our lives should not be dominated by fear. Instead of walking in a spirit of fear, we should walk in the spirit of God. And that spirit is one uh, of love, of power, and of a sound mind. And a sound mind is one that is free of unrest, worry, doubt, anxiety. One that does not look at circumstances, um, does not look at the experiences that they've been through, one that is truly and completely focused 
on what the Word of God says concerning them and nothing else. And the Bible warns us against fear so much because fear left unchecked can be completely detrimental to our lives. When we allow it to dominate us, fear um, will influence every aspect of our being, including our thoughts, our patterns, our behaviors, even our decisions. And once we um, begin to make our decisions based on fear instead of the word of God, then we allow fear to inactivate faith. And we've learned from our faith series that when we don't have faith, we will never get to the place that God has designed specifically for us. And we will never experience the miraculous in our lives. So, Fear can come in all shapes, sizes, and forms. Some people have a fear of failure. Others have a fear of the unknown or a fear of the future. And a lot of people suffer from fear of others. Um, they care so much about what other people think, about what they say, or even what they'll do, that it completely hinders their ability to move. And fear, when we get to this place where it dominates us, it renders us paralyzed. And we can't run our race. And how do we overcome this fear um, especially this fear that paralyzes us. Um, and we'll um, now look at our second passage of scripture in our text, which is uh, the book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. And it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. And so many of us are experiencing this torment from fear. But this scripture tells us that in order to overcome fear, we must be made perfect in love. And how do we do this? John chapter 15 verse 9 tells us how to switch from walking in the spirit of fear to walking in the spirit of God and the spirit of love. And this is Jesus speaking to his disciples and he says, I have loved you even as the father, he's speaking about God here, has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love. God tells us in his word not to worry and not to fear. He also tells us that he's our provider, that he's our healer, that he is our ever present help in time of need. And when we don't walk in this truth, we don't obey his commandments. He commands us not to fear and then we don't obey it. And when we don't obey his commandments, he tells us in the scripture, we don't abide or remain in his love. And when we don't remain in his love, then we switch from walking in God's spirit to one of fear. And when we walk in fear, we are not able to walk in freedom in truth, in his original um, design for us, which is to walk in authority and dominion. And ultimately, fear displaces our authority. And then we are bound by fear, by these chains. And it's like trying to run bogged down completely by all types of weights and when we try to run the race that God has for us, bogged down with these weights, we either A, collapse from sheer exhaustion, or we 
are severely crippled um, and we walk with severe difficulty, forget trying to run. And when we walk, we're so impaired that we can never ever get to the place that God has specifically for us. We are severely limited. And whether we collapse from the exhaustion or we are just so impaired that we can't even run. Um, either way, fear torments us and prevents us from getting to our final destination. So the question remains today, what are you afraid of? And in that same regard, what is your fear preventing you from doing? As always, it is my sincerest hope that you guys be well, that you continue to believe God for the impossible, and that after today and throughout this series, that you overcome fear, that you begin to be released from all of the chains that bind so that you can run full force, full steam ahead with all of the things that God so desperately wants to give you and that you continue to go higher and higher in your faith and believe him for all the impossible things in your life. Be well and I will see you soon. And remember to join me next week as we continue our discussion on overcoming fear. See you soon.